So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Omay Manyar. I'm a graduate student at University of Southern California. I work with Professor uh, Satinder Gupta's group at uh, Center for Advanced Manufacturing. And today I'll be talking about the work that we do in robotic composite layup domain. So in my presentation, I'll be showing a couple of videos which uh, shows the gradual uh, progress that we've had in robotic composite layup. That gives a good flavor about how the process is and how we tackle different complex tools, which are uh, directly picked up from the industries like Lockheed Martin and Boeing. And all of these projects have been funded by Arm Institute. So um, without any further delay, I'll play the first video. If there are any questions, feel free to interrupt me. Uh, there is a background narration that walks you through the video. So if there are any um, issues with the voice or the background narration, please do let me know. So. Composite materials are enabling innovative design concepts in many industries. For example, modern aircrafts use composite parts to improve fuel efficiency to fly longer distances. Layup of composite pre-preg sheets is a widely used process for making composite parts. Currently, a manual process is used for laying up sheets on molds to make composite parts. This requires tedious and ergonomically challenging operations. Performing this type of operation over long periods of time can lead to serious health challenges. We have developed next generation robotics technology to automate the sheet layup process. Multiple robots collaborate to manipulate the sheet and perform the layup task. Sheet layup is a complex task. Automating the layup process requires advancement in five technologies. First, we need advanced sensing capabilities to monitor the process. Second, we need tools for performing the layup operation. Third, we need artificial intelligence capabilities for robots to program themselves. Fourth, we need advanced controllers to prevent defect formation. And finally, we need an easy to use interface for humans to provide expert knowledge. The robotic cell is smart and it can adapt to uncertainties during the layup process. The cell uses AI algorithms combined with the force and vision sensors to intervene and avoid defects. The system uses advanced computer vision to detect defects and calls humans for assistance. Humans play an important role in robotic cell operations. They provide the cell with high level strategy to generate good quality plans. Our robotic cell can produce defect-free composite parts. We believe this work will accelerate the adoption of composite materials and lead to the realization of innovative design concepts. All right, so um, that gave you an overview of how a composite layer process works and how, what, uh, in what way we can use robots to actually automate it. But the tool that you guys saw was about three feet by three feet in dimension. But as we can see in this picture, this is uh, provided to us by uh, Boeing in another arm project that we did in, last year. The tool over here is typically of the size about by like four feet by five feet. And in this, these kind of applications, you need multiple operators collaborating with each other and trying to do the composite layer. Now, uh, to automate such kind of process, you need integrate uh, knowledge of the composite sheet that you're using. And we, you, we took a physics-based simulation approach in, uh, in this particular project. So you can see we have developed like a hybrid cell in which the robots are actually performing the job of the operator and providing support to the other operator who does the complex draping task. And then we have another robot which basically does a draping task. In this, the approach is we divide the composite sheet into different draping zones. And each of these draping zones are, are conformed to the mold in a sequential manner. 
And for each of these regions, what we do is we used a composite simulator, which is nothing but a thin shell FEA model with accurate material parameter models for the prepared sheet. And then we try and compute the grass plans for it by doing a state space search. And once we have the generated uh, grass plans, we compute the feasible robot trajectories. And then this video will demonstrate how those computer traje uh, trajectories help the operator and give us feasible grass plans. And the top left uh, corner, which is showing the current status of the process. So the number is basically the region number which is being draped. In this particular application, we had nine regions, but potentially we can have um, n number of regions and the number of regions is generally decided by some subject matter expert. And for each of those regions, we'll calculate a uh, feasible grasping locations for these two manipulators, which are holding the composite prepared sheet. And in such cases, when you have open loop executions, there's bound to be some kind of error. So we use real-time sheet tracking. So in this case, we've used a RealSense D415 camera, which is an RGBB camera, to track the composite sheet in real time. And the generated point cloud, what we do is we try to perform certain uh, process constraints uh, satisfaction, which we, these constraints we have identified over experimentation. And then we uh, design a concept of intervention controller in case any of these process constraints are violated uh, based on the point cloud data that we are receiving. What we do is we correct the robot trajectory in process and try and continue the uh, try and continue the process if there are any minor correction. But there would be cases where the material parameter model is highly inaccurate, and this particular uh, video would show you what that high inaccuracy means, where we have excessive drooping, which is highly undesirable and can lead to defects. In such cases, we just halt the process by taking the prepreg pre to a safe location. So uh, we saw a human robot collaborative um, approach, but um, moving and moving further with um, a completely automated cell. We are currently working on a um, complete robot uh, on tools such as which, which I use for manufacturing tubular parts. So in this case, right from the pre prepreg loading, the sheet transport, everything is automated. And we use uh, additional robots for supporting, uh, for supporting the pre prepreg while draping so that we don't have any undesirable defects such as air pockets or wrinkles. And this project is being done right now in collaboration with ARM Institute, uh, Southwest Research Institute, and Lockheed Martin. And you can see there's an additional degree of freedom, which is in our cell, which allows the robot to do intricate draping and get to those complex uh, locations onto the tool, which wasn't possible earlier. And this enables us to uh, manufacture or composite parts which involve a tubular kind of a structure, in this case, which is a Lockheed Martin S92 cup. And the tools that we have developed over the years have helped us achieve complex draping, such as uh, the draping which we see right now is um, not that straightforward to achieve. If we didn't have the additional uh, degree of freedom, and the draping planners that we have developed, uh, it wouldn't have been possible to do these kind of draping because the, uh, the key process constraint in uh, draping up a composite sheet is maintaining the force. So we use, so we execute these KUKA robots under the impedance control mode, uh, control mode to maintain the draping force that we need. And this ensures the quality of the layout. Until now, the results look uh, good and promising, and we'll be continuing to optimize this particular process. Um, and this project is 
due for completion by September this year, and hopefully we'll have a much more impressive demonstration by then. Right. So coming to the software architecture for a typical composite layup cell, since we have multiple robots doing different kinds of tasks, each of those, um, so we, we extensively use ROS, right? From cell setup modules, which in, involved the more registration and vision and contact-based registration of the robots, to the planning modules where we are trying to generate grass plans for the robot and real-time sheet tracking system modules, which are, are vision-based modules where the drills and stock to the system, all of them are individual ROS packages. And the kind of architecture that we have is we, use, we extensively use the subscribe and publish and service network to talk to a centralized coordinator package. And the coordinator takes input from the user interface, uh, which helps us make our whole architecture modular and integrate it with any advanced UI which is out there. And then we use TCP IP communication to communicate with our robot. So ideally we could use any standard mo um, manipulator. And for generating the trajectories, we use ROS move it. So as long as we have all those kinds of supports, we can generate feasible trajectories for um, any robot platform that is out there. So in summary, uh, composite prefect layup are highly complex and we have developed a hybrid as well as a completely automated cell. And all of this functionality wouldn't have been possible uh, with the freedom that ROS architecture provides us. And we also have real-time monitoring capabilities. We use Microsoft Connect Azure, in, in case of the hybrid cells where the operator can interact with the system to give any sort of control commands. And um, all of these um, has been possible to seamlessly integrate only because of the functionalities that uh, Ross has provided us. So yeah, that, that concludes my presentation. Are there any questions? Well, pretty awesome. Any questions for, for Omi on the composite layout? Great video. I know the system's kind of uh, in a fluxing state, right? Just because you're into phase two now. Yes. So, um, and a lot of these results, I assume, are from like your multiple phase one efforts, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So, for those who don't monitor what the ARM Institute is funding, you know, all the time, uh, there is a follow-on project here, and you did, and you, Omi did share the the inclusion of the rotating axis, right? So, coordinating with external devices as a is up next, right? So interesting idea, this idea of managing textiles, uh, trying to identify like say non-desirable drooping conditions, right? It's things we, for those of us with backgrounds in, in heavier metal uh, don't really deal with, but it's definitely uh, really pushes the envelope on what we're trying to do with perception and intelligent planning. So I, I thought it was really great to, uh, for Omi to take the chances to kind of let you guys know this is going on um, and, and that we're applying both a lot of open source tools and a lot of different work and evaluating sensors uh, in this type of application. So Omi, thank you for taking the time. Any questions for Omi? Yeah, hi, this is, uh, this is Gijs. Hi. Hey, Gijs. Hi. Um, I, uh, I had two questions actually, or maybe three depends on the, uh, on the answer. Um, one is you, you mentioned you use Moveit almost exclusively, uh, but mm -hmm. I also see lots of, um, well, contact, uh, forces being managed and move it does not take those kind of things into account so I'm wondering how you are how you are taking those into account while doing your motion planning or is that something that's completely taken care of by some sort of external system or maybe something running on your KUKA controller yeah that's a great question so yes we use the internal impedance controller which is given to us by KUKA to do the force and uh, to control the force and implement the impedance controller so move it we are using only for Cartesian point to point planning that's it Okay, interesting. And and how are you uh, taking uh, sort of the, uh, I mean, is this, it's obviously a cell with multiple uh, robots. Mm -hmm. Are they all planning, are they all planned for individually or is this a, a one sort of giant cell, so to say, a move it sees all the robots at the same time. How is this, uh, how is this configured on that side? Okay, uh, yeah, that's a great question. So the move it cell configuration, the move it setup that, um... I've used is only for the two manipulators, which you see, the grasping robots. For the draping robot, where it is important for us to basically follow spine motions with force control trajectories, we use our own kinematic solvers. And um, 
then in the background, what we do is we send those uh, in ROS, we compute the inverse kinematics and compute the feasible trajectories and send it to the ROS control, uh, sorry, to the KUKA controller. And it takes care of the force that needs to be applied so that uh, we have a force control trajectory execution. Okay, so if I understand you correctly, there is no single planning scene that Move is using for all three robots, right? That's what you're saying. Yes, that's that the two right. grasping. Yeah, that's the only two robots which are involved in the planning scene are the grasping robots. And so, and the 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 pre prep is that represented in the planning scene and uh, and the mold maybe, or are you not using the avoidance collision avoidance functionality at all at this point? So collision avoidance is only used for the mold, not for the pre prep since the, okay. like the robots are under force control as well over there using the KUKA controller. Over there, we assume uh, that the robot will, since the tools that we have developed help us maintain contact with the pre prep we do not add it as a collision object or a, an attached collision object. We only add the mold as a collision object. So the collision avoidance that you see is only done with respect to the mold move it okay interesting yep. uh and then the, the the third question is sort of uh, uh where can we find publications about this because uh, uh are you publishing about this is this available somewhere i obviously assume that you know it's not just open source somewhere because mm -hmm. um well i i looked up your github organization and it's basically empty uh mm -hmm. so it might unless it's somewhere else i'm guessing this is not necessarily available but then i'm hoping that you're publishing about this because there's quite some interesting stuff going on and it would be great for other people to be able to uh, at least learn about the scientific principles behind it, right? Absolutely. So I can I can share the link to the publication. So the hybrid cell publication got selected in ICRA 2020 and I'll be presenting that in May, uh, on May 31st. So I'll share the link to our latest publications and our website that we have. So we do get these complaints that our website is not up to date because there's a new website, which is, uh, currently concentrated only on a work that we do. So I'll just share it with the community right away so that anyone who wants to have a look at the publications related to this can have a look. Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, thanks a lot for your questions. Appreciate it, thank you.